What's going on guys? Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. A little bit different video here where I'm going to talk about a common landing error. And it's actually two things. The first one is flaring early and the second one is a late disconnection of the auto thrust system. Now before we go any further, I do want to make clear we're flying a 320 here. I'm in the left seat in the captain's seat at this point and we actually have one of our uh, longtime followers and student in the right seat. And uh, he gave us a shout, picked up some sim time with us. We got in the sim, flew around for several hours, and perfected energy management and the landing flare. So with that, I want to share with you what I'm doing in this video and some takeaways for you. Now, in this video, I am actually flying the aircraft. I'm going to land the airplane. And not only that, by the way, I'm going to intentionally flare incorrectly. In other words, what you're about to see is how not to do a landing, and by recognizing and seeing how not to do it, we'll shed some light on how you may want to do it. Now, these common errors, so to speak, are the are these two items. The first one is a, a flare that is a bit high. Now, what happens when we flare high is that the airspeed will begin to decay. It'll begin to slow down excessively, and of course, the A320 auto thrust system will not allow the airspeed to go below what's referred to as VLS or lowest selectable speed. So whenever that airspeed begins to decay or decrease, the auto thrust system begins to advance thrust in order to speed back up. Now because these engines are mounted under the wing, thrust application results in a nose up pitching moment. Likewise, a thrust reduction would be the reverse and result in a nose down pitching moment. So if you flare a little bit early, not only does your speed bleed off, but then the auto thrust system begins to apply thrust, which ultimately, because of where those engines are mounted, brings the nose up even more aggressively. And now we end up in a low energy state, excessive pitch, and a balloon because those engines are applying thrust. Now the other thing is, let's say you flare right on time and it's perfect. The other thing that could potentially happen is you do not retard the thrust levers on time. And by on time, I like to use 30 feet as a guide. Whenever we're coming in to land and we start to hear that, that countdown by the radio altimeter 50 40 at 30 feet I begin working those thrust levers back doesn't mean I chop them to idle right away but I certainly bring them out of the climb detent by 30 feet or more over at 30 feet and I begin working those thrust levers back towards the idle position remember that in the a320 the thrust levers can also be thought of as thrust limiters assuming the auto thrust is on and as you begin reducing the thrust it doesn't necessarily mean that you're actually reducing thrust with the auto thrust on. It simply means that you're reducing the active range, how much thrust the auto thrust system could actually provide for you. Now that's kind of an explanation of it in and of itself. And I do talk more about that within our program online. But in this video, I just wanna show you how I'm gonna flare early and explain uh, how those engines are gonna spool and then cause us to balloon. The audio nor the angle is the best, but I'll do my best to pause and play and narrate uh, as we go here. So with that, let's get into this thing. So let's say here, one button. I'm looking down at the flare. Watch what happens to my speed here. If I start flaring. Here we're at 50 feet. Um, pointing to the airspeed indicator as I start to initiate the flare a little bit early and a little bit excessive. I'm intentionally doing this so that we can point out how the airspeed is going to start to decay and, and slow down into the VLS, which of course the auto thrust system will not like. 40, 30, 20, retard, retard. So the airspeed now has bled to a point where we're in the VLS. Clearly the thrust levers uh, have also not yet been brought back to the idle position and I'm pointing now to the engine warning display showing how the thrust is beginning to uh, apply and it's going to cause us to balloon. And of course here we're not quite, not the best angle as I mentioned to capture this on video but we're ultimately ballooning again you can't really see it too well in this video angle but we're certainly ballooning here and ultimately I end up calling the go around as you can see. Just go around flaps and off we go. So I guess the main takeaway that I want you to know is be cognizant of the fact that early flares result in early decay of airspeed, which will result in thrust application, which will result in a nose up tendency and ultimately a balloon that will likely end up in a go around. The other thing to be aware of is usually by around 30 feet, I begin bringing those thrust levers out of the climb detent back to the idle position so as to prevent once that airspeed starts to decay into the flare, ideally we would like to settle on nicely in a minimal energy state onto the runway. 
and not have that auto thrust system begin to apply power, ultimately resulting in a balloon. If you like more content like this, straight to the point, uh, hopefully very easy to understand, please check out our website, onesteppprep.com, where we have an entire video library online with this type of content. Uh, also, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe, like, and subscribe to the channel. We drop content on this channel on a weekly basis. And also, I want to share with you folks on October 18th, just a few days away, we will be doing a live webinar. All of our members online get invited to these live webinars where essentially I myself or perhaps my partner Juan will be in the studio in Miami uh, streaming live to you and in this particular case we're talking about the ECAM actions on the A320 so we do these live streams as a member you'll have access to them they are recorded and they're going to be stored in your student account uh, for life and you will be able to view them as long as you're an active member so we certainly look forward to helping you whether in person perhaps virtually online or maybe it's through our video platform but we certainly hope that you join our 1SP family as we like to call it and that we can play a role in your training success. Joe Munoz the name OneStepPrep.com we'll see you in another video.